being here. My blooming alley is looking rather sparse, but what is in bloom is just giving me so much joy. What needs to be done here is to the left here, I mean, just scooch you around. Here is my beautiful Fias Tancanvillie, which has Vaseline around the pot. I got to clean that up, otherwise I can't move it without the whole thing slipping out of my hand, which is counterproductive. And then I have to get the rack that is in the deep south, and it has to go in the place of where the Fias is right now. Some orchids need protection, and I want my summer bloomers to at least be outside to enjoy some good light, as opposed to what they've been getting up until now. Okay, let's see if we can. Ooh, that is slippery slimy. I just want to get rid of it with a paper towel. Just the surface. Oh, mind the new growth, mind the new growth. And then I'm going to just wipe it down with water and some dish soap because this stuff is now very dangerous, unfortunately, when it comes to handling the pot. <laughs> And yeah, we don't want any nasty accidents. That would create more mess, more problems for the orchid than necessary. That's the only downside when it comes to a point in time when you remove the stuff. And if you can leave your pot where it's supposed to be, you don't even have to remove it. But you can also see that it does attract quite a bit of dust, makes things look a little bit unsightly. But yeah, we're gonna need this space now. Tiny bit of dish washing liquid. We got the squeaky clean? No, it's not squeaky clean, but it's good enough. At least the worst has been removed. All right, let's make some space. All right, so unfortunately, there is no space on the patio for this orchid to be in full bright shade. She is going to experience some issues here because it's far too hot and far too exposed, but it is the shadiest place that I can find for this orchid during this time of year. I will be losing some of the leaves. Again, you can see the damage from the wind. I keep trying, it's not working. Well. I suppose if there is a dog basking in the shade trying to get away from a hot but cloudy day, that is a good indicator that I've kind of picked the right spot here. Because if a dog needs to cool off and they're not inside, they will always find the coolest place. So I'm kind of, hey, I like my thinking and I like him proving me right. The only thing I don't like about this configuration is the pot is on the ground. I don't like that one bit. And that is also because of dogs and another reason being, you know, well, ants will get into anything at any time. So I'm going to have to find something to raise the pot up at least a little bit off the ground. But I don't want to put it on a chair and then, you know, hold that thought. <laughs> I may change my mind just because it's more convenient. We'll have to wait and see. First of all, let's get that rack into the blooming alley. All right, let's get rid of these. Let's put, well, <laughs> not get rid of them. Let's put them somewhere in the meantime. Look, little updates here and there. Lelia Flava is starting a new growth. There you go. Uh, there it is. I was hoping for a second growth. She's a big enough orchid, but okay, I'll take one new growth. That's something better than nothing. Boy, this pot is heavy. <laughs> okay, and wow, this one, I wonder, I have not moved because, yeah, reasons. This is my copper victim, Epidendrum stamfordianum. It's trying to recover and I keep messing around, but I have a root branching down here. Oh my goodness, it's the first proper sign of life in, well, since I almost killed it because of copper. So I'm keeping that little branching root nicely protected with some permanently damp microfiber and there's a lot of foliar feeding going on. I hope I can save this orchid. Oh, poor thing. Neophenicia falcata is about to stop growing its roots, which means hopefully some spikes will appear soon. I can't see any though. 
That's a bit sad. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Correction. Center screen. Spike alert. Center screen. That pink thing that you see coming out. Not the root tip, but behind that. One spike. I'll take one spike. She had approximately seven last year. In 2021, that is. Oh, and here comes another heavy pot. Dendrobium Berioda. Sorry, she's a bit dirty. There's still ash on her from the fires. But we've got three new growths coming. Which weren't there the last time we checked. Three. I find that a little bit mediocre. I was thinking five. Oh well. You know what? We just got to be happy with what they give us. So we'll put this one away. Ooh, I don't know why today everything feels a little bit heavier. But yeah, okay. I'll try not to breathe so heavily. Down here I have Lelia Pops DI getting two growths. Very pleased about that. There's one and there's one on the other side right there. Yeah, this makes me happy. You see why I'm thinking two growths for Lelia Flava? Hmm, Pops DI can do it. Why not Lelia Flava? And then we have all these little itty bitty QTs. My Rapiculous Lelias, who's doing? That was close. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay. Slow down, Nina. Who's doing what? Itambana is supposed to be growing new roots. Ah, there we go. No new growth. And then Crispy Labia right here. She's a tease. She grows beautifully. Lots of sheaths, but nothing. No blooms. That's okay. Honestly, these Rapiculous Lelias, I forgive them for not doing what I was hoping they would do this year. I will do a comprehensive Rapiculous Lelia seasonal update. And let's just get these out of the way and put the rack into the blooming alley. Barbecue and blues, can you believe it? Every time I see your name pop up in my comments, you evoke such a relaxed vibe, weekend vibe. I just love your name, Barbecue and Blues, especially when it pops up in winter gloomy days. <laughs> you make me feel a little bit more relaxed, but you had a brilliant idea and I'm going to do this today. I've got garbage bags. The struggle is real, trying to recover my Vander roots or encourage, let's say, Vander roots to maybe branch. I busted the Valamen because of, you know, copper treatment back in 2021. Very unhealthy Valamen, probably not even functioning properly anymore due to the fact that it doesn't absorb as it should. So, very dry climate and <laughs> barbecue and blues suggested trash bags around the roots because I cannot submerge these in a bucket without causing more cracking, possibly more damage. And it's just all a little bit risky. And enter big garbage bags. And I was like, yes, yes. You know, the Harry met Sally scene in the cafeteria in that movie. Yes. And here I am. Unfortunately, I don't have white garbage bags, but <laughs> this is giving me some hope. It makes perfect sense. Now, I can't tie them that tight because I want water to drip through and I want to be able to spray into the garbage bags so that water can pool at the bottom, create more humidity, protect the roots from the horrendous wind I've been having. Meanwhile, this video is now coming out a few days later from when I started filming my orchid chores. All right, so I always spray the leaves as well to help them from dehydrating or losing so much water because of the dry, dry winds. I also focus on the root that is still sticking out because that is the only velamen that I can see that is responding to a degree that I would consider correctly. Even the stump here on the right, that one there, it is very woody velamen as well, not hydrating properly. 
but any water that drips into the bag is going to be a bonus and it's going to stay there and create humidity if i do not see my roots down there hydrating with the water that i am applying i will then go in the future with the sprayer into the bag itself and do a kind of a squirty squirty thing to hydrate anything that's down there and in there but this makes so much sense oh my goodness except it looks awful the blue I don't like the blue not for my orchids but let's do the other one this is leopard yawn oh by the way that was Vanda Denisoniana but you see I have another one here same issue busted belayman I may need to move Kimmy who's right underneath because I want water that's dripping from above to drip on Kimmy as well but Kimmy has got to go because that bag will be touching her upper growths so let's move Kimmy out of the way and do the same with leopard yawn barbecue and blues i owe you a lot if this works if this does the trick now i haven't had a very hot summer so far even this morning i had cold feet but now i am in flip-flops i am so sick of the waiting game whenever it decides to warm up enough for me to be able to just feel hot sweltering hot unless i have got a heat index as i age that is just not going to be satisfied with any temperatures below 30 degrees celsius i don't know so same procedure here just gonna tie it off so it doesn't blow off because one thing i do want to avoid is if any new root tips grow I don't want the bag to be abrading too much against those roots, but I don't want it to be falling off. You can see how windy it is, and this is a calm day in comparison to what I had in the past week. It's been horribly blustery. It's just been yuck. So we're gonna keep that in mind when we come to watering the leaves, just to make sure they don't keep losing more and more of their water and then into the bag we go create a nice pocket of humidity in there oh my goodness all aesthetics aside if this works it's gonna be amazing while i'm here i might as well give some respite to kimmy down here clearly under the same circumstances very very hot dry today very windy might as well give her a little bit of a breather. What she has going for her is that her roots are also in the dish of the orchid top. It's basically just me trying to keep those root tips extending. Now the ambient air is so dry, my root tips are dying back. We're going into preservation conservation mode. But yeah, barbecue and blues, look. <laughs> what do you think? Something like that, huh? Oh wow, if this works, there's a massive IOU, but I'm feeling hopeful and I'm not so stressed about having to worry about this wind and I'm having to be out here almost every hour on the hour spraying and check my summer callus, how it's developing. No, it's not painful, but it develops because of the spraying, the amount of spraying that I have to do. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you, Barbecue and Blues, for this tip and I will keep you updated. Anybody else that is struggling with the conditions that I deal with, let me tell you, even though it may not look nice, this makes perfect sense. When it comes to upping the humidity around your Vanda roots so that they get a chance to just, you know, not dry out and go crispy. Something else that has just come to my attention, oh boy. And yeah, King is looking right at it. Thank you, King. I wonder if he's developing assistant skills. No, he's developing intervention skills. He's lying right where I need to get going. Look at this. This has just happened this morning. My basket here is brittle. It's breaking and everything is leaning over this way. Oops, that's not good. And that happened because of the berry odor over here. That is a big pot. It's heavy. So I'm going to have to shift some orchids around. I don't have anything that matches the height of this basket here. I may need to go and replace it, but Barry Oda has to shift a little bit more to Garen Weaver. And of course, Monsieur is right in the line of fire. Oh, he was sleeping when I started to move the tripod. Okay, first things first. 
Let's get the major weight out of the way and put Garen Weaver where it may be a little bit more solid, but it's possible that that basket is gonna break as well. I can already see it bulging, so these two need to be replaced. These two orchids here are fine. Rinko Stylus Gigantea crossed with Van der Sarula and a green hopper, whatever. Now, the reason my attention went here was because of the garbage bags and I thought I'm going to put a garbage bag around the green hopper as well because if humidity is an issue with these roots, then the garbage bag is also gonna serve a great purpose. When I looked over, I saw that basket was broken. see how the green hopper is closing its leaf it's just not getting enough it's losing a lot of hydration through the leaves okay for now that's gonna have to be good enough more water that I add the heavier that's gonna get and my orchids will end up in the hedge So the space where I had my fires and I was gonna put her for the rest of the season, the one that I could find is cooler, more protected, trying to protect the leaves to some degree. Well, that is empty as you can see. It is just untenable over here. This is mild as I mentioned. This breeze, let's say wind gusts, whatever you wanna call them. I don't wanna sound like I'm exaggerating, but it, it's just been horrendous. So what I've done is, Move her over to the furthest corner of my patio, my collecting area for debris and things like garden cuttings and all that kind of stuff. But here she has sun, but at least, at least she doesn't get battered by the wind. And I say that as if I'm convinced about it, but I am not. You can see the one leaf over there. Yeah, I even put a support around that leaf and yet coming from the west, the wind will push into this corner as well, but not as bad. There are temporary stays of wind gusts in this corner. It is the most protected. It is still breezy enough. I'm hoping my pseudobulbs won't fry. I tried something else last year. That didn't work. I literally cooked my pseudobulbs. So this is the solution that I can find at this point in time. And hopefully, well, that she'll find it in her heart to grow me the new growth that she is starting. The stand that I moved in here right at the beginning of this video has since accumulated a few more orchids. I brought out the Roy Tokonaga and I've got Phalaenopsis Cornocervi variety Chatella Day here as well as my rescue Zygopedalum over there. So summer bloomers have moved out. Having done that, I had some bud blast, but for me, it's more important that these guys get the light that they need. If eventually things change, then we can focus on blooms again. But light is more important at this point. And, you know, all my Rapiculus Lelias are now a little bit more protected, even though they could stand the harsh conditions. I just feel much more comfortable having them back in this location where I can monitor them also with regards to how much humidity is collecting in the evening around the root ball, that is what they need, etc, etc. And right on the bottom, I have also added some of my slipper orchids, some paphiopedalums that do not get any direct sun, but they can benefit from light. And when they're here, I won't forget to soak them because at this point in time, the Spicerianum and the chocolate mint are drinking faster than they normally would. And if they are tucked away indoors, yeah, my attention is so focused on out here at the moment, I really have to make a conscious effort to remember that indoors requires attention as well. So the Rapiculus Lelias continue along those lines. They've been there. I'm also monitoring them. Oh, my beautiful Purpurata, when I'm down at that level, it's always wonderful to see her gorgeous blooms at eye level. And then the Ancelia Africana in the back. Right, I'm gonna call it a video, not a day. This has been kind of an overextended period of time, discombobulated video because of the conditions that I'm dealing with at the moment. But I hope that you enjoyed seeing what little bits and pieces have been going on. 
I am still finding ash from the fire that we had recently. So all this wind is still causing a little bit of a mess. I try to stay on top of it. I'm not going to be too fussed about it, but at least in this corner, we are ash free. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.